Hey everyone, today Dave and I are going to be talking about chapters 1 to 14 in the Forever War. Now you may be wondering why I made a video for the first part of our presentation. I mean, after all, I am like standing right there. Um, well, you see, I know this guy who likes to help me with these kind of things, and he wasn't going to be able to make it to class today, so we made this video to just go over the main events of what's happened so far in the story. So let me introduce to you the person helping me, Kalsik. Hello, everyone. So, Kalsik, what do you think of the Forever War so far? I've actually really liked it. Yeah, me too. Just the whole idea of the book is really cool. I mean, people always worry about alien invaders, but no one really ever thinks of the possibility that humans could be the aliens. Yeah, well, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's just go over what's happened so far in the story. Sounds good. So, so far in the story, we know that the human race is at war with these aliens they've named Tarns. Because of this, a draft was instituted forcing a select amount of people that are considered above average into serving in the armed forces, which effectively makes an elite military unit devoted to protecting from and stopping the apparently imminent Tarn threat. Yeah, I mean, didn't it say that no one in this group has an IQ lower than 150? I mean, isn't that really high? Yeah, it is. In fact, actually, the main character, Private William Mandela, he was actually a physics student before he was drafted, and he makes it really clear in the story that he really never wanted to be a soldier, but no one has a choice if you're drafted. And being drafted in this elite military unit is really no fun either. I mean, the training is grueling and dangerous, and I mean, so many people die before even being technically deployed because of accidents that happen during training. Though the futuristic technology that you get to use is pretty cool. I mean, lasers and robot suits, not to mention the collapsers. Oh yeah, the collapsers. Uh, in the story, they're more or less just small black holes that can be used to travel faster than the speed of light. Which is why humans can get to these way distant planets in a relatively short amount of time. I mean, in other words, the collapsers are just pretty much a stargate in space. And one time, while the humans were using a collapser for travel, a Tarn ship attacked a, the human vessel and destroyed it, and it killed a lot and a lot of people. And that's why humans are all up at arms with the Tarns, and they're actually going to invade the Tarns' homeworld. In fact, at the end of the first part of the reading, Mandel is actually part of the invasion, and they're about to mount an attack on the Tarns' base. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen when they attack. I mean. They have no, really no idea what the Tarns are really capable of, and in fact they barely even know that much about the Tarns themselves. And you know what they say, knowledge is power, and right now the humans are at a pretty big disadvantage. Well, I think that's about it so far. Uh, we don't want to run too long. Okay, well, as always, Kalsik, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, although you kind of did owe me after you didn't put me in your last video. Yeah, I hope I never make that mistake again. Better not. Okay, Dave, you're up.